Hello and welcome. It is Thursday today. I'm not sure if it registers on your calendar or not, but today is also Ascension Day, the day in which, down through the ages, the Christian Church has remembered those strange events that are recorded in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus returns to the Father's side. Also, this year, as in the last five years, this is a day when the Christian Church in this country and across the world, in many places, has launched an initiative known as Thy Kingdom Come. Thy Kingdom Come is an opportunity between Ascension Day today and Pentecost Sunday for individuals and gathered as church to pray for people on their minds for that they might know Jesus Christ and his love in a much more clear and personal way. Now, in this Methodist circuit, we're going to be following Thy Kingdom Come using this prayer manual, which I hope you will have received a copy of, or if you haven't, if you're on our list, you will do in the next few days. Day by day, I'm going to be bringing to you a reflection, just a short thought on the theme of the day, along with uh, a Bible reading and a prayer. I hope you can join me for these, and we'll share together these thoughts. Today, on day one, we begin with Jesus. What better way to start? This prayer journal has there the words, God so loved. A reminder of the words of John 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 16. But before we get into a bit more of that, let me take you back to Acts chapter 1 and the story of the Ascension. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times that the Father has appointed by his own authority, but you will receive the power from the Holy Spirit when the Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. While they were looking intently up into the sky while he was going, suddenly two men in white appeared next to them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. I wonder what they thought about those events. I wonder what we would have thought if we'd been there. Such a startling thing to see. But we also need to remember that this was their friend, the one that they knew and loved, and also that they knew that he had loved them. It seemed a strange thing to do if that love was to continue. But Jesus was acting in love, as he always did, because he reflects the love of God. The love of God was evident in our universe long before Jesus became flesh and blood on this planet. If we were to read at the beginning of the Bible the story of creation, we could find there evidence that God was there in his act of creation, working in love. We might say God so loved the world way back then. And also, if we were to turn to the other end of the Bible, the book of Revelation, and a story of the end of all things, or the wrapping up of everything, there again, God is acting in love. When Jesus spoke to his disciples at the point he departed to leave for his father, he said to them very clearly, you will be my witnesses 
in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, how would they have been able to witness the love of God, the creation of the everything? Well, they weren't there any more than we are. And how could they witness to the love of God at the end of all things? We don't know in what way we will be witness to that. Surely we will be in some way. But for them, Jesus' words were that you are to be my witnesses. God so loved the world when all things were created. God will love the world still when all things are wrapped up. And now God does love the world. And for those disciples and for us, it's a matter of witnessing to where we see that, here and now. Thinking about the way that we're praying for people, it's important that we remember that as we pray for them. That we give to God these people that we're remembering, knowing them to be loved dearly. And to ask that they might themselves experience that love in a personal way. Jesus longs to see people come to him and to know in their hearts the depth of that love. And so as we pray our way through these 10 days to Pentecost Sunday, let's remember them and remember that God so loves them. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, this time uh, special set aside for prayer in your church. We pray that you will help us as we remember those that we're praying for, to keep in our hearts and minds both them and your dear love for them. And as we ask in faith, we pray that your love might become evident in their lives. And we dare to ask too, that as we pray, you might stir us up more to know your Holy Spirit's work in love in our day-to-day lives. Bless our journey, Lord. Bless all those who are watching this video, those who are involved in thy kingdom come around the world. And hear our prayer as we make it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope you can come back again tomorrow and see more of these reflections from Thy Kingdom Come. Amen.